All right, uh, Ime Odoka. He can say this now. You say this kind of stuff when you get the job. And when you get the job in the first year, you've taken your franchise further than it's been in a dozen years. You say, yeah, I'm proud to lead the Celtics. And, and I remember everybody who passed on me, and, it's, and it worked out for the best. Now, you can have that perspective when, when the new job is much better than the job you initially wanted. So Ime Doka, no, he wanted to uh, he wanted to be the Pistons coach. They passed on him. He wanted to be the Cavaliers coach, and they passed on him. And uh, Michael Pena, he wanted to be the Pacers coach, and they passed on him. And eventually, uh, after being an assistant in San Antonio and an assistant in Brooklyn and Philadelphia, he got the job uh, with the Boston Celtics. And so they take on the Warriors. Game one tomorrow night in San Francisco. And Michael, I'll start off Michael Pena. Say hello to Megan Trippin, by the way. Uh, filling in for Mike Smith. Megan, What's hello, up, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> I haven't talked to you that well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Michael, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you look at this, uh, and I saw you tweeting about it, the run that the Celtics have been on. Okay, take down KD and Kyrie, and then you got Giannis, and then you take on the number one seed and Jimmy Butler. Now, the Warriors are a different animal altogether. Um, do you think there's anything on this run that has prepared them for what they're about to see tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, I think that if you're going to bet on the Celtics, it's a bet on their defense. And their defense has been tested by, as you said, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving in the first round. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, in the second round, the defending champs. And then Jimmy Butler, who was seemingly unstoppable for half of the series when his knee was looking right in the conference finals, their defense just was able to to morph, to switch, to drop, to, to, to execute all these different coverages that Ime Udoka has instilled throughout the regular season. And then the other thing that I would say from this run is the maturation of Jason Tatum offensively where he's just been able to pick apart any scheme, any defensive coverage that has been thrown his way. You switch screen and rolls when he's hunting smalls, and uh, then you double him when he's hunting smalls. You trap him. Anything he's been able to conquer. Um, his game six on the road in Milwaukee was a just a groundbreaking performance for him as an individual, winning an elimination game on the road against the defending champions. So he's been very impressive. His growth has been very impressive. And then their defense and the tests that they've overcome on that side of the ball where they've proven that they were no fluke in the regular season, I think that that has fortified them to be very competitive in these finals. Michael, you use the word growth, and while their defense has always been there, we've seen it since like early from the regular season. The one thing that was always kind of like uh, you're always wondered about was offensively, how, were, could they ever be that team? And you take if you go back to like November when Marcus Smart called out Jalen Brown, Jason Jaden, where, where he was saying that they don't want to pass the ball. What's just been the biggest surprise to you from that point into now, especially offensively, from what's changed from their game? Yeah, I think that, you know, after the All-Star break, they had the number one offense in the NBA. So they, they showed during the regular season from month to month that they could get it done through shot making, through ball movement, through man movement. Their assist rate from the regular season to the playoffs is up, I think, 6%. Only the Warriors have a higher assist rate than the Boston Celtics in the postseason, which is very impressive. And I just go back to Tatum, honestly, uh, where he was, for example, in the bubble as a playmaker when um, their offense got pretty stagnant against the Raptors in the semifinals and then against the Heat in the conference finals. He's just a completely different player right now. Um, his playmaking ability, his ability to identify defensive coverages, to find the open man, to get off the ball, the willingness to pass and trust his teammates in four on three situations. That's gonna be absolutely critical in this series because he's gonna hunt Jordan Poole, he's gonna hunt Steph Curry and behind the play, the war Warriors know that they're going to pack the paint. They're going to force him to make decisions as a passer instead of as a scorer. And he's proven that he can do it. So um, his ability to kind of um, 
rise and ascend as a true superstar is why it's okay to be pretty confident in the Celtics in a series where they're going up against a team that this is their sixth finals appearance in eight years. And so Tatum is kind of the guy that needs to lead them. You know, I, 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 and tell me if, if, if I'm going too far here, if I'm just being a little too literal, because I, I can't stand literalists. They, they, they're going to ruin, they're going to ruin the country and ruin the world. The people that literally take everything, uh, just at, at just every little detail. But when we say the Warriors have been there six times in eight years, the organization has. But this team's a little different. I, mm -hmm. Michael, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if, if the Warriors win this thing, if it will feel like 2015, because I try to go back there is like their number one score was Steph. <laughs> it was Steph and you had clay, but it was Steph and you had Draymond this the, the the crew that's there now, but that was seven years ago. And so they it's been a long time since they've had to rely on that kind of model to win a championship and the, with the KD years and I, I'm not hating. I love watching them with KD and he was awesome and he, he deserved those two finals MVPs that they won, but this is different. I right, tell me what you what you think or project what it's going to look like if the Warriors are to win it. What's it going to look like for that guy Steph Curry and, and the team overall? I don't think Steph has anything to prove. Personally, I mean, I think his imprint on the game is just absolutely iconic. It's legendary. Um, if he were to win the championship this year after the two year hiatus that they had as an organization, um, getting back after Kevin Durant left them, uh, I mean, it would be obvious, it would be incredibly impressive for sure, um, especially with Clay Thompson coming back from the, the humongous injuries that that he had. Steph has kind of always been just, I mean, one of the greatest players who's ever lived and his gravity, his defense has actually improved from 2015 to a, a humongous degree. And you have D Draymond Green still around as kind of the fiery soul of this team. You have the offensive philosophy instilled by Steve Kerr, the ball movement, um, the touch time that is just, you know, these guys get off the ball so quick. They're, they're constantly cutting, constantly moving. The split action is basically unguardable now as it was in 2015 and in 2016 before KD got there. So I think that just like what is most impressive to me about this team is how they've incorporated someone like Andrew Wiggins and got him to buy into a role as a two way wing. And he was critical in the conference finals and, and the development of someone like Jordan Poole, the development of someone like Kevon Looney into these bigger roles beside beside Steph, beside Clay, beside Draymond, how they're able to kind of accentuate the core, the long running core. I think that's been the most impressive thing. But to me, Steph is. You know, if they win it all and he wins his first finals MVP, that'll just be kind of like a cherry on top of the, one of the greatest careers we've ever seen. All right, so it is a cherry on top. I think like to see Steph Curry get that, we know the conversation that's centered around it, but why is it, do we put too much pressure on Steph Curry? Because it all, it, this always comes up when it comes to the word. And I, you hate, Michael, you hate the word literalist. I hate the word legacy because oh, what does it mean for his legacy? If he doesn't get an MVP, will that change anything? I know you mentioned that he doesn't have anything to prove, but why does this always keep coming up when it comes to Steph Curry, when it comes to those three letters, MVP, especially when in the finals for that trophy? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. Um, the fact that he hasn't won it yet, I suppose, is is why people are harking on it, kind of picking at something that he has not accomplished and wondering why he hasn't and kind of using it against him. But I mean, you could go situationally and really pinpoint why he hasn't won a finals MVP. I mean, he had Kevin Durant, one of the greatest offensive players in league history on his team. He had Andre Iguodala that first year. Steph could have easily won finals MVP in 2015. I don't think it matters that much to me. I mean, he's a two time uh, regular season MVP. He's the only unanimous winner of the award in league history. He's the greatest shooter who ever lived. Uh, he creates more of a mental strain on defenses than pretty much any player in my lifetime. So I, yeah, it's kind of uh, silly to, to worry too much about the finals MVP. Um, I don't think he cares about it. I don't think he cares about it that much, but uh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Hey, you know, it's pollen. The pollen is thick around here. The pollen is thick. That's, a, that's all it is, Michael. Now, go ahead, finish your point now, so I can disagree with you. <laughs> no, he's just, he's, he's just great. And I don't think that winning a finals MVP is anything that he needs to do to be recognized as one of the greatest players who's ever lived. <laughs> I will say this. I agree with that. Look, Steph Curry is amazing. And you're right. The mental strain that you got to, like, you've, you've really, defenses have had to, they've been redefined based on what Steph Curry can do. Like you like, like most of the time, like growing up, Megan, you know, a long time ago when I grew up a uh, long time ago, uh, they, they would tell you, hey, leave a guy. You, 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 you'd be out of your mind to defend somebody 25 feet from the basket. You just leave him alone. No, don't do that. But with Steph Curry, there's no leave him. You can't leave him. You can't, whether it's Steph shooting or creating space for Steph to drive. He's a great finisher, too. We keep forgetting about that. And then some of the passes that he's able to make, you got to defend him at all times because he can hurt you. So I agree with that, Michael. But the finals MVP, I think it matters because of that list that we just put up. Now, you could, you could say Iguodala was an all-star with Philadelphia. He was a first-round pick. He's a really good player. But most of the time, if you go down the list of finals MVPs, you don't find many, eh, eh. It's the iron. And we know from watching these playoffs, a lot of egos are involved. As Dylan Brooks said, Megan, I'm playing for respect. And so it's really like a very, um, hey, there's a lot of testosterone, okay, involved. <laughs> there's a lot of bragging rights. And for somebody to say, I'm the best in the world and I'm a champion, I get two for one. I get to say I'm a champion and I get to say I'm the best in the world. That's why I think it matters. And, and I, you know what? It matters to Steph. He may not say it. It matters to him. It doesn't affect his legacy, but I think it kind of grates on him a little bit because he is among the best, but he's not able to be on this list. Yeah, I, I see. I, I see your point there for sure. Um, I also think just generally, and this is a different conversation, but finals MVP is kind of like a best of seven sample size. And if you were to give the MVP of the postseason for every time that the Warriors won the championship, he would probably win that award. So I don't, you Great know, point. it is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Excellent and the, point. I've also I've also heard the argument that like our definition of what MVP is, you know, it's like most valuable player, but it doesn't always mean that it's the best player on the court. And so it's like, it's very different, but I do think it depends on what level you carry the MVP finals trophy at. I don't hold it at that high idea. I think Steph Curry can walk away today and say, and his accolades and it's in itself, I'm not going to like, but that finals MVP, mm, you didn't get that one. I won't do that, but I understand why people do bring it up. And I agree with you, Michael. I do think that Steph Curry does care. I think that he might not, it's not like the first thing when he wakes up in the morning cares, but he probably thinks over maybe around lunchtime. He's probably like, oh, that finals MVP trophy. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> right, and I right around lunch. Right, <laughs> right around lunch. Just right around lunch. Yeah. Then, I, then I'm over it. Hey, Michael <laughs> Pena, we would be remiss if we got you out of here without asking you the big question. So last thing for me. All right. Who you got and why? I'm I'm going Celtics and six, um, and the reason is a bet on. Look, I think that the Warriors have the best offense in the postseason. The Celtics have the best defense from the regular season, and then pretty much in the playoffs, they've had the best defense as well. And the bet on the Celtics, and this is a coin flip decision, to be honest with you. But the bet on the Celtics is their defense, their ability to slow down, to switch every single screen on ball, off ball, really muck up the Warriors offense in a way that hasn't been done in a playoff setting since the 2018 Rockets did it when they switched everything with like sized defenders. The Celtics are built to do that. And I'm just gambling on in, in my prediction. I'm gambling on that paying off, slowing down Golden State's offense and then Jason Tatum being able to really get to the rim, get downhill, get to the free throw line and really establish himself as one of the game's great players. Okay. All right. So he's got Celtics. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Megan. Go ahead. I was going to say, he's got Celtics. He agrees with you. Michael's got the Celtics. I picked the Warriors in seven, but the way I look at it, Michael, 
you said Celtics in six, but would you be surprised if the Warriors are still able to get it done? Like, will it be a shock that would come over you? No, not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I really, I, you know, it's six or seven. It, it's it's a it's semantics right here mm -hmm. with this prediction. But no, like, but see, no, no. But you say six though. <laughs> when you say six, that's not a coin flip. Six. That's a that's decision. True. Like, wait a minute. Like coin flip I, is Celtics in seven. I'm gambling. Celtics mm -hmm. in six is like okay. Celtics, like they got this. It's a little. It, it, it's. It, I. I think that at home, if they if they're up three two, I like them to close it out at home. Is what I what I'd say to that is why I'm I'm I'm, I'm picking the six instead of the seven. But their defense is just so great, and that's just really what I come back to. What I hang my head on with the prediction. Um, this defense has solved so many different problems. I know the Warriors create different problems than any other team yeah. can, but. Ime Odoka and just how this team is built with the, the individual defenders that they have. They have no weak points at all in their roster. Um, I just, I, I think that that is going to be the deciding factor in the series. Michael Pena, always great to hang out with you, man. Um, come back again. We will come back and talk about when the finals are over. We'll all kind of pull out our takes and we'll put the film on, see how right we were, how wrong we were. We'll see. It'll be, it'll be a good time. It'll mm -hmm. be a good hand. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.